Hello, and today we have with us RJ Spina. Is it Spina? Spina. 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 Um, and I actually um, uh, discovered you uh, in a, uh, a video by the Jeff Mara podcast, um, God Wants You to Know. Um, God Wants You to Know This. Um, and at, as I was watching it, um, I was just blown away with how the principles that you were laying out um, so directly correlated with what I am doing here on this YouTube channel, what I do in my practice with my clients. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you. <laughs> like, I just wanted a reason to talk to you. Um, so thank you so much for being here, RJ. That's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Emily. Awesome. Well, um, we will get into later, um, all of the things RJ, um, cause there's so much more to unpack. Um, but I just want to hit the tip of the surface right now. Um, and let you know what I, what I really saw as the correlation between what you guys, the discussion you and Jeff Mara were talking about and how that applies to people who might be watching this video. Um, what you talked about was you said that karma is the addiction um, and the attachment to anything low frequency. And you likened it to Spider-Man and his webs and that his webs, once he's there, are stuck. And that's how we are with addiction. Can you um, expound on that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A silly, a silly analogy. But, um, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets the point across, right? Exactly. Okay, so when we talk about uh, karma, okay, karma, as you, as you just said, uh, at least from my, ex my perspective, is the addiction or attachment to, to really to anything here. Okay, and as you said, we use a Spider-Man and the spider web. Once he has attached himself to something, he's not going anywhere. He's now attached to that. Now, how this applies to us in terms of our evolution, in terms of our state of being, our state of consciousness and our, and our health is that <clears throat> an attachment is done with our energy. Okay, so Spider-Man shoots a spider web, right? And it's, a, and it's a spider web. But when a human being becomes addicted or attached to something, it's through the identification. They see themselves as part of the thing and it's their energy that is stuck to the thing if that makes sense whatever whatever the thing is it doesn't it doesn't really matter so addiction and attachment has to do with identification we lose ourself in the thing whatever the thing is and what's actually keeping us stuck or attached to the thing is our energy now this this energy is not energy that we would be able to see with uh, our five physical senses and therefore, we wouldn't be able to make sense of it intellectually because the intellect can only work based upon the data stream that comes in through the five physical senses. That being said, from a higher state of consciousness, we can actually see these things through our third eye or spiritual eye, however you want to say that. And there are literal energetic cords that we make to things. So uh, well, I'll, I'll give another uh, silly analogy or silly example, which will, will hopefully will hit home for people. So let's say, <clears throat> say, Emily, we're watching a, a scary movie, right? Okay. So we're sitting in a seat and there's something being projected on a screen, right? 20 feet away, 40 feet away, 50 feet, whatever, whatever it is, right? Okay. So if we're watching a scary movie and we let ourselves get caught up in it, okay? We start identifying with what's going on. Like we're the one trapped in the house and the, the bad guys in the house, whatever it is, Right. So if we start to identify with what's going on with the screen, what's actually happening is by giving something our attention, attention is energy. Whatever you give attention to, you're actually giving energy to. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. So if your attention is on the screen, this is the spider web. So our attention is now on the screen. There's an actual cord of energy. Our five senses are never going to see this. There's an actual cords of energy that are going to the screen. 
And once you're attached to the screen, whatever happens on the screen, you then experience because you're connected energetically. That's why something scary happens on a screen and you shake in your chair. How is that possible? Metaphysics, we just explained how. So it's energy that is attached. So addiction, <clears throat> karma, attachment comes from our energy being stuck to something because we've identified we've lost our true self. We've lost ourselves in the movie. We've lost ourselves in the, the, the incarnation. We've lost ourselves in the food and the drink and the gambling and the sex and the what, what, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. We've lost our sense of self in it and our energy is stuck to it. And this is why we have such a problem moving past it because energetically we've made an attachment to it. And the only way to overcome this is to, is to realize the truth. And the truth is, is that you're the awareness of whatever it is that you're attached to or addicted to. You are the awareness of it, not what you're aware of. You are the awareness itself. And when you start to reside or sit, if that makes sense, within pure awareness, and you can think of that as meditation. When you start to just to sit in the fact that you're aware of the craving, you're aware of the longing, you're aware of the, of the desire for something, but you sit in that awareness long enough, what happens is the spider web withers and dies. Mm. The key is to sit in it long enough to realize the truth and to break the addiction. So what's really happening is the cord of attachment, watching the scary movie, right? Something happens on the screen and we get scared, right? That's because we're attached to it. But if you just sat there long enough at the movie theater, and you stopped identifying with what's going on and you just watched it dispassionately or you just observed it like it's a boring movie, then what happens on the screen won't affect you because metaphysically what's happened is your energy has come back to you because you're no longer identifying with it. So as your energy comes back to you, what happens on the screen doesn't affect you. So in terms of an addiction, it works the exact same way. Metaphysics is metaphysics. The truth is the truth. As you sit in the awareness of this, eventually you'll realize that you're not the craving. You're aware of the craving. And once you become aware of the craving, you don't have to act upon it. And over a period of time, the craving or the addiction or the attachment will literally wither away and die. Wow. And isn't that so funny that we turn to the comfort food to kind of like numb out like we turn to it, the, the sugar and the processed foods to numb us. And what we need to be doing is to be aware, not numb. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. By numbing it, we'll just continue. It, the, numbing is kind of like just treating a symptom. It's not going to the root cause, right? You could even say, you know, this is kind of sort of the paradigm of Western medicine, right? We simply treat something. We never actually cure it. There's no actual remedy. We're managing. We're managing symptoms. We are emotionalizing. We're, we're eating to sort of soothe ourselves. We're not really understanding what it is that we're upset about. We're covering it up. And it's always some form of identification, an identification with an event, an identification with a belief, an identification with a bodily sensation, an identification with a concept, an identification with a so-called trauma. Okay. Now, it's the identification with it is losing yourself in it. Once you lose yourself, you, you have no more power. So the key is to your energy coming back to you through detachment. Energy is power. So if you want to become incredibly powerful and overcome any addiction, any karma, any attachment, you have to sit in the awareness long enough so that your energy starts to return. Just like watching the movie, all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I'm not going to get caught up in this thing. I'm just going to watch it dispassionately. Your energy actually returns to you. And when you get that kind of distance from your attachment, from your addiction, uh, from, from, from whatever it is or from whomever, your energy starts to return to you and you actually start to empower yourself. And once you've empowered yourself, you can now do whatever it is that you need to do to overcome whatever it is that you need to overcome. 
Absolutely. And I, I wrote a note from the Jeff Mara um, podcast and um, you said uh, it's addicting when we identify with it and that slows down our consciousness. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So if when we lose ourself, remember we're the awareness and the awareness is untouched. Now the body mind is affected by what goes on here, but not awareness. How can awareness or pure perception be affected by anything, right? And the analogy that I often use, Emily, is, is the sun, right? Now, <clears throat> the sun actually gives birth to everything here. Without the sun, there would be no life, there'd be no trees, there'd be nothing, there'd be no planet Earth that needs the sun. But oddly enough, no matter how bad the weather is, rain, sleet, snow, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, doesn't matter what it is, does any of this touch the sun? No. It doesn't affect the sun at all. Now, we are the sun. You could think of it as your soul, as your consciousness. Whatever word you want to use is fine. But what we are is the sun, and it is untouched by whatever goes on with body-mind. Completely untouched by that. And meditation, authentic meditation, gives us the tangible experience of this. It's just not some weirdo talking about it. It gives us the tangible experience of this complete detachment and this self-awareness. And when you become fully aware of the self, you realize that you're not those other things. You reside and marinate within the self and you tangibly realize that you're the awareness of everything. And none of this stuff actually affects you. Just like the sun is not affected by the bad weather. And I don't care how bad it is. And so anyone who's watching and listening, your core, your soul, your essence, your sentience, your consciousness, whatever word you want to use, is untouched by the human condition. The body-mind is part of and attuned to this environment. The body-mind is affected by what goes on here because it's part of physical reality. What you are is beyond physical reality. So at your core, you are unaffected, you are untouched, you are unsullied, you are perfect. And the more that we can tangibly start to experience this, the more that we'll transcend any issue, any problem, any, any attachment that we ever have, any time, no matter how bad it is. Well, and I feel like sometimes when I'm talking to my clients, they're identifying with this illusion. They're identifying with, I'm an addict, I'm a sugar addict. I am, you know, lazy. I am this, I can't meditate. They're identifying with these things. And I'm like, no, I see you. You're brilliant. You're so, you have so much wellness and, and health inside of you. It's just covered up by some layers right now. And we just got to get to that true identity inside of you. You, you, you got it. That's the key. I'd like to say is that the, the soul is the cure for all that ails humanity. Right now, it's, it's realizing we're, that we're the awareness of the thought, of the emotion, of the bodily sensation, of the craving, of the, we're the awareness. We're untouched by it. The sun is untouched by the bad weather. We are untouched by it. The longer that we can sit in the awareness, the more that we'll break free of all our disharmony. And this includes sickness, disease, ill health, even aging, which I haven't gotten into at all, but even aging can be greatly slowed down. It has to do with maintaining a high frequency state of consciousness and state of being, right? So we can really do anything if we have the proper foundation and the proper understanding of that, that we are the sun, that we're untouched by what goes on here. But when we lose ourselves in the bad weather and we think it's never gonna stop raining, or it's, it's, you know, the sun's never going to come out again. Well, of course it is. Of course it is. Just be patient, relax. And eventually the, the clouds will disperse and you'll see the sun again. And it's the same with yourself. If you can let the cravings and the addictions and the identifications eventually just float away, because they will, if you can sit in the state of being present long enough, all of that stuff will actually leave you because it doesn't belong to you. And once it leaves you, you'll realize the truth that you're perfect exactly as you are. Yeah. And I love the, um, the second doing second grade over analogy, um, where you say that the higher mi mind starts to flower and we are more capable of not partaking. And then we are no longer stuck. 
And so we're not taking second grade over and over and over again. And I think so many people in this diet culture, they're like, I've been dieting since I was 10, you know, and they feel like they're taking second grade over and over and over again. But as the higher mind starts to take over and you're able to just not partake, even if you just start with a little bit, just, I didn't partake instead of having 10 diet sodas today. I had nine, you know, and I tell my clients, I'm so proud of you. That's huge. And they're like, no, nine diet sodas is horrible. And I'm like, but it's better than 10. Like you got to start somewhere so that you can operate in that success and realize how much you are capable of and then build. You, you, you got it. All right. But what is the saying? The journey of a, a thousand miles starts with one step. Yeah. Right? You know, or, you know, something like that. Right. A ab absolutely. If we're, if we're stuck on 10 sodas or, 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 you know, or whatever it is, and we cut that back, that's tremendous progress. That's tremendous. And, and that's how it starts. It starts that way. No one goes from 10 to zero. It, do it doesn't work that way. And it doesn't need to work that way. Okay. There's, there's no such thing as failure. It's only delayed success. Mm. Okay. And when we start to understand our own timeless nature, we'll start to work with the concepts of success and failure very differently. We'll stop putting so much self judgment and pressure on ourselves and realizing that one step forward is monumental. It literally is. And that one step forward is how we learn not to have to take second grade over and over and over again. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I love how you talk about um, that the ego mind um, and meditation cuts off the supply of energy to whatever it is. And as you said, with that courting, um, whenever you can stop, whatever you can do to cut that off, it, it stops feeding that. And then you are able to break free. Yeah, this is this is a monumental paradigm shift for human consciousness to start to understand how things work this way. Uh, you can think of symptoms of illness as, as like a computer program running. Okay, now how, how do we stop a computer a computer program from running? We cut off its energy supply. We unplug it, right? Okay, so meditation stops the disharmonious thought patterns that are running. Now, th there's no energy for your disharmony to keep running on if your mind is completely clear. Everything stops. Everything. And in that becomes, becomes self-awareness. And as you start to become self-aware, you start to gain self-control. Mm. As you start to gain self-control, you start to gain self-discipline. And once you gain self-discipline, Self-realization is around the corner. So it does start with 10 sodas to nine sodas. It does start with five minutes of meditation. It does start with just an inch of separation between you and the thing. And to realize that you're the awareness of it and you don't have to do anything with that. You're just the awareness. The sun doesn't have to do anything about the bad weather. The bad weather is going to stop eventually and it doesn't affect the sun. You don't have to give in to cravings. You do not have to identify. It's a, it's a lie. It's a falsehood. And the more that we can sit in the awareness of that, the better that we'll feel. And as soon as we start operating that way, it's tangible. People start to feel better right away. And one of the most important things, at least from my perspective, <clears throat> is the ability to be present or what we call meditation. Now, I, I, I can't tell you, Emily, how many how many thousands of people I've worked with and uh, most of them say the same thing when it comes to meditation. RJ, I have tried and tried and tried and I cannot meditate. And, and they have tried. They absolutely have tried. They're not, you know, and they'll tell me about their incense and they got their headphones and they got their crystals and they got, and I love all those things, by the way. So that, that's, that's all fine, right? Okay. That stuff's got nothing to do with meditation. Okay. It's got nothing to do with meditation. All right. So I like to say that what we really are, the self, the soul, consciousness. I use the word the self. The self is meditation because we exist prior to thought. Okay. So what that means is, is that it's our natural state to be in meditation and you don't have to do anything for it. Mm. 
So just sit with that for a second. It's our natural state and you don't have to do anything to achieve meditation. You already are meditation at your core. You exist mm. before there's a thought, before emotions, you exist before the body, all of that. Okay. It's your inner clarity. Yeah. It's, it's what we really are. The awareness of everything. We talked about the awareness of everything before, not what you're aware of, that you're the awareness. Meditation is the awareness of everything and the awareness exists before there's a thought. So this is very important to understand. And also the effortless nature hmm. of, of true meditation. And we can do, we can do one of them right now. So this is, I teach this to everybody. I teach this to little kids. I teach this to, you know, to people in their eighties and nineties and everyone can do it because it's our true, it's our true nature. And it takes one second. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. So this is what I call a magic trick. And when I say magic, I mean, magic with a CK, not magic with a C like three card Monte or pick a card, any card. I'm not talking about that kind of magic. I'm talking about real magic. Now, real magic to me is the accessing and utilization of energies that lie outside of physical sensory perception. That's magic. That is also metaphysics. Okay. So real magic and metaphysics are the exact same thing. They're just two different words to explain the same process that goes beyond our five physical sensory perception. Now I make no bones about it. I do magic. I understand metaphysics. So let's do magic right now. Okay. So meditation in one second, all you have to do is pretend that your physical eyes are not connected to your brain. And you can't think. You don't even oh have to. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And you don't even have to close your eyes, Emily. In fact, open your eyes and, and look at me. My eyes are not attached to my brain. Correct. And now you can't think. <laughs> okay. So, so look at, and, and that's why I say it's real magic. Now, what, now what's happened there's a couple of things, and let me just explain, because I think it's important to understand metaphysically and energetically what actually you know, just happened, so to speak. Okay, number one, that is real, real magic. So we went from the paradigm before was, I've tried and tried and tried to meditate. I've tried for years and years and years. I can't do it. I can't stop thinking, RJ. Now, you went from I can't stop thinking to you can't think in one second. I couldn't even breathe. I was like, right. uh, uh. <laughs> Right. Okay. So look at the gigantic paradigm shift that just happened from, I can't stop thinking to, I can't think in one second. Now also know, and this is what I mean about real magic. Now also notice that what we just did doesn't require an effort. You didn't have to strain or try or, 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 or concentrate or lock yourself in your room and put on your headphones and light your incense. And, you know, I didn't even have to close my eyes. That's right. So, <laughs> so now this is what I mean about meditation. We are meditation. The self is meditation. We exist prior to thinking. Thinking is downstream. So we're this pure awareness that has nothing to do with thinking. And one of the magic tricks for humanity to experience this magic instantaneously is to simply pretend that your physical eyes are not connected to your brain. Now that stops the thought process because it stops the analyzation and judgment of phenomena, whatever it is that our five senses are picking up. We normally just constantly analyze, 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 and that's what the rational thinking mind does. The higher mind has no use of that. So meditation is accessing and, and connecting with our own higher mind. We are our higher mind. This is what we truly are. That's creativity. That's imagination. That's the true connection to the source field, to God, to source, to creator, whatever word you want to use, doesn't matter. It's through the higher mind is the connectivity. The rational thinking mind is what fragments, compartmentalizes, and separates what is eternally whole. And that's what thinking is. So we have to be able to overcome that. And now we can overcome it in one second by, by using real magic. Now, what we don't see that's happening when we do these magic tricks. And the book has got tons and tons of magic tricks. Because like I said, I do magic. I love magic. Okay. So what's happening energetically, which our five senses don't see, is that th thinking 
is it's a circular profile. It's, it's, it's essentially energy that is trapped in our memory bank. So thinking is simply the flipping through the, the, the Rolodex of past impressions. That's what thinking is. It's flipping through the Rolodex of past impressions. And it's an electrical movement in a circular profile around what's called the mental body. Okay. So the, all that aside, that's what's actually happening. Now, all that aside is when we do the two eyes not connected to your brain, what actually happens is the energy that we normally have circulating nonstop in our mental body in the circular profile trapped in the same room running around and around and around. When you do the magic trick, what actually happens if we could see these things, the energy that's normally in your mental body literally just drops down like water draining from a bathtub. So all of a sudden, all electricity stops because there's a disconnection and the energy drops down and now you can't think because there's no energy in the mental body to run its circular profile, which is flipping through the Rolodex of past impressions, which is really what thinking really is. So these magic tricks stop that process and they return you, return your awareness to the self, to pure perception, being simply aware and this awareness, this pure perception is what exists. It's what we are prior to creating a thought or prior to emotionalizing or prior to animating the body. And it's in that state of consciousness where self-repair, self-healing, and believe it or not, self-realization, which is authentic enlightenment, that is the genesis for all, for all three of those things is that state of consciousness. Wow. 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 Um, and then there was another word that you said um, that I had to look up the definition of um, is you said our sentience is what allows us to break free. Um, and I looked it up. Sentience is being able to perceive or feel things. And I think so many times, especially with breaking addictions, we want to think our way through it. I'm going to um, a, a party. And so I'm going to think about what I'm going to do to what I'm going to eat at that party. And I'm not going to eat the cake. I'm not going to eat the sugar and the processed food. I'm, I'm going to think ahead of time and I'm going to pack um, some, you know, nutrient dense, you know, foods for me to bring to my thing. But you say that it's our sentience that allows us to break free. Yeah, yes, ex exactly. So yeah, the, one of the one of the pitfalls of the 21st century is the idea that the intellect is going to uh, free us. It's actually the intellect that entraps you. So like I said, thinking is a circular profile. It's, it's kind of like running around the garage looking for the kitchen sink. It's, not, <laughs> it's just not in there. It's just not in there. So really what we have to do is return to that meditative state. Now, what the meditative state gives us full access and dominion of our sentience. Now, sentience... Uh, is sentience is what we really are. Okay. Sentience is our amount, our weight, believe it or not, our level of love and wisdom. Mm. And that's what we really are. And the subsets of those things are what we call our talents and abilities. That's what we really are. We are sentience. Sentience is an indirect fractal of God. And that's what we all are. Now that sentience is given energy in order to create. That is the energy that we use to think, to emote, to animate our body, and to create experiences. Now, sentience, our divine intelligence, our level of love and wisdom, it's through pure awareness or observation that action actually takes place. It is the activation of our divine intelligence, which is why there is no need to figure anything out. By simply being in observation, you will know what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say, and who to say it to at all times. The sentience, the soul, the higher mind, the consciousness, whatever word you want to use, knows. The rational thinking finite mind doesn't know anything. The reason why the mind constantly wants more and more information is because it doesn't know anything. It just memorizes so mm. all it does. So we have to put that to bed through being present, through doing a magic trick, any magic trick, by doing a magic trick. So the sentience, the divine intelligence, the pure awareness and woven into 
your awareness woven into the screen of your consciousness is your depth of love and wisdom. And that is the only thing that anyone ever needs. The more you put to bed your rational thinking mind, which is always just a reactionary state to things, the more power and control you're going to have over yourself because the self is sentience. And now we come back to self-control, self-awareness, self-discipline, self-realization, self-healing, self-repair. It all, it all spawns from that state of consciousness, which starts with non-thought. That's the key. Mm. I love that. Um, and I love how you, uh, you talked about increasing your sentience and how mm. you can do that, um, through basic alignment, um, in doing, saying, acting what you tangibly know to be true and expect no results. Mm. I cannot tell you how many people come to me and they're new clients and they're like, I want to be this weight. I want to weigh this. I want to have my knee pain resolved. I want this. I want that. And they, they get a month into it and they're like, I don't have results. I don't have results. And I'm like, you're not gonna, if you keep like banging that drum, <laughs> but um, I, I love how you, you talked about, um, also, um, be how you want to feel and feel how you want to be. Um, and so those two things, uh, um, uh, absolutely amazing. Go ahead. Yeah. The, so, um, the, the expectations I want to be, you know, so-and-so in two weeks or 30 days or, you know, whatever it is. Okay. So one of the analogies I'd like to use is that, um, if we get in our car, right? And, and let's say we're going to go to the store. It doesn't, doesn't matter. We're going to go to the store, right? And we put the address in our GPS, right? Okay. We're heading to the store, right? We know that we're going to get to the store. We know it. When we get in the car and we put it in the GPS, no one sits there and goes, God, are we really ever going to get there? Are we really going to get to the store? I mean, I mean, should we start looking up another ad? I mean, should we, let's Google this. I mean, I, I know we set the GPS and I know we're on our way there, but I really doubt that we're going to get, okay, nobody does this. Okay, so there's a level of knowingness. Now you can call that trust and faith if you like, but there's a level of knowingness there. Okay, that's number one. We have to start to work with that. Just like when we get in the car to go to the store and we use the GPS, we know we're going to get there. We have trust and faith that we will arrive at the store. Okay, have trust and faith that you're going to make improvements on your diet, on your this, on your that, whatever it is. Have trust and faith. That's number one. It's essential in terms of any endeavor, any endeavor. There must be some level of trust and faith. Okay, here's the other thing about looking for results big mistake. And I'll explain why. Okay. Let's go back to the same silly analogy about your GPS going to the store, right? Okay. So you type in the address, you're on your way. Okay. But you know, turn left here, you know, merge onto the highway here, turn right. Okay. Does anybody just all of a sudden get so fed up and they turn, they turn off the side of the road and get out of the car and just start looking at, to see if they can find the store to see if they're getting any closer. I'm stopping right here. I need some results. Let me just stop right here. Let me start looking around. I can't, I can't see, you know what? I can't see the store. I can't see it. I'm not getting the results that I need right now. Okay. Right. Ridiculous. It's a ridiculous analogy. Right. Okay. But it's effective. Okay. I have yet to see, uh, hopefully I've yet to see anyone pull off the side of the road to see if they're getting any closer to the store. Right. Okay. Nobody does this. Okay. Now, metaphysically, what's important about this is that You've stopped the process. You don't get any closer to the store by pulling off the road and getting out of your car. So what that means is every time you look for a result, you've stopped the creative process of the manifestation of your desired result. You have stopped the process yourself by looking for a result, by pulling off the side of the road and trying to find the store, you are no longer getting any closer to that store. I got news for you. You're never getting to the store now because you've stopped. Okay. So when we start to understand metaphysics, metaphysics is the key to everything. 
Magic and metaphysics are the key to everything. So when we start to understand sentience and energy and how they really work, we're going to be able to do anything, like unparalyze yourself, right? So we start to be able to do anything. We cannot look for results because it stops the creative process. Now, what we need to rely on, what I said before, is trust and faith and a knowingness that we're going to get there. And we are going to get there, and I can prove it. And I don't care what the, what the achievement is. It doesn't matter. If all your energy is going towards one desired result, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Okay. If all your energy is going in that direction, it is inevitable that you will get there because all the energy is going in that direction. It can't go anywhere else, right? If you get on a train headed to New York, you're not going to end up in Toledo, Ohio. The tracks are going to New York. You would have to veer off the tracks, like stop and say, am I getting any closer and veer off the so energy will, will continue to go in the direction that your intention is set, like the GPS. Mm -hmm. So if you never break your intention of whatever your desired uh, achievement is, it will inevitably manifest because it must, because all the energy is going in that direction. You can't go right, 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 and all of a sudden end up left. It's impossible. So we're the ones that do this. We break our intention by looking for results by setting up unrealistic expectations and not following through in the creative process, we're the one that actually stops the losing the weight or changing our habits or unparalyzing. It doesn't matter what it is. And that's the other point I wanna make about that. I don't care what the desired achievement is. It doesn't matter. The truth is the truth. This is how metaphysics work. If you follow your intention and you follow your energy, eventually it will take you to exactly where your intention goes if you never break your intention. If you never deviate from the GPS going to the store, you'll get to the store, period. It's when you deviate. And what is deviation? Doubt. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Stop. Stop. Trust, faith, follow through. Don't break your intention and you will achieve whatever it is that you've set out to achieve. That's awesome. It kind of reminds me of the analogy that you had with the movie. So instead of like courting to the movie, you're courting to your, your intention. Yeah, the, the, exactly. The intention of uh, the analogy, again, the GPS, if you set your intention, I'm going to the store. If you set your intention, I'm going to lose 30 pounds, Wh whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. It really doesn't matter. You set your intention and you follow through on everything that you need to do to get there. You end up there. GPS, turn left here. You turn left, turn right here. You turn right, merge onto the highway, merge onto the highway here. You get there. It's the same with losing weight. It's the same with breaking addictions. It's the same with getting healthy. You do what you need to do moment to moment in accordance with your intention, whatever that is. If that's, I'm at the grocery store, right? And there's the snack aisle. Don't walk down the snack aisle. Then you don't need to. Do you need to see the Cheetos and the Fritos and the Twinkies? And like, don't make it hard for yourself, right? Walk right past it. You do not have to go down that aisle. Don't, don't create doubt for yourself. Know that you're going to go, go get there. If you don't have to go down that aisle, don't. If you don't have to make a left turn and break the GPS directions, then don't. And it's the same with whatever it is that you're trying to, you're trying to achieve with yourself. Stay true to your intention. Don't break it. And inevitably, you will end up there. Mm, I love that. I love that. Um, and uh, another thing that I wrote that you said was put your beingness into your doingness. Yeah. So yes, they're very, very important. So, <clears throat> so for some people, meditation or being present, they're just sort of waking up to this, something that they desire to have more control over themselves, to be more present, to, to be more truthful and authentic to, to themselves and discovering their true self. Right. Okay. I found that sometimes people struggle with maintaining that they fall back into bad patterns or bad habits, or which are really the same thing. They, they, they fall back into that. Okay. The one very simple and profound way of overcoming that is that once, once we are present, right? Let's say we do a, a, a magic trick. And another magic trick, by the way, is pretend that you just arrived here. No past, no future. Okay. You can't think because thinking is past, future, past, future, past, future, right? So if you pretend that you just arrived here, no past, no future, you can't think. Okay. So and there's another magic trick for meditation. Okay. 
Now, what happens is when we're fully present, our beingness, our true nature is now online and at the forefront. Our beingness, a human being, our beingness is now here because we're not doing this. The beingness, I am here now. So once the beingness is online, take that beingness and just put it into your doingness. Beingness into doingness. You don't need this. You don't need the fear-based rational thinking mind. And it is fear-based, I promise. You don't need that. In fact, it only gets in the way, right? So you just have the beingness online and take your beingness and put it into your doing this. And this is how you stay true and live an authentic life. And it's very simple. In fact, it's really effortless. All our effort is in trying to be something that we're not. That's where the effort comes from. So life in a lot of ways should be a flow state. Strike the word should. Life, when we're in complete alignment with ourselves, is what we call the flow state. We flow from moment to moment to moment to moment. And all of us who, you know, people who play sports have experienced this, people who are very creative, you know, even dancing, cooking, guard, it doesn't matter. We all know what the flow state feels when like. When I'm we're, lost in a conversation with RJ. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So exa- exactly. When, when we lose, and think about when we say lost, okay, what we're losing is the ego mind. Think about that. So when we say, I lost myself in that movie, or I lost myself, what you lost is your fake identity, your ego mind. Okay. And, mm. and, and let that stay lost forever. I promise you'll feel much better. So we, we just want to have the beingness flow right into the doingness. And the more that we can keep the ego mind identity or the electromagnetic interference out of the way, the more that we'll be in complete alignment with ourself. And every single facet of our life will improve when we operate this way. The flow state is the highest creative state that we can be in. Now, when we create our life, don't we want to be in the highest creative state that we can be in? That's how we create the greatest life that we can for ourselves. And it's actually effortless. If there's lots of mental straining and emotionalization over it, that means your ego mind identity or electromagnetic interference has gotten in the way. And that means it's time to do another magic trick get yourself present, have the beingness come online, and then take the beingness into your doingness. And as soon as that gets disrupted, start over again. And pretty soon, this being fully present and the flow state will be your new default setting. And now we are operating in the highest manner. Wow, wow. Uh, thank you so much for your teachings. Um, but I want to go to what taught you. Um, mm. I, I have a, uh, an experience that I had that I can relate to a percentage of the emotions that you might've had. Um, I had multiple sclerosis and I couldn't walk without an assistive device. And, uh, I had delayed and slurred speech and literally like I, I had lesions on my brain and they told me that I was just going to continue to get worse. Um, that I was going to be crippled, um, uh, that I was going to be in a wheelchair and, um, more than likely lose my ability to hold my bladder, um, and, uh, you know, be in diapers, be in a nursing home. Cause that's just what you do when you have MS. It, it wasn't a, you know, you might be able to do this treatment or you might be able to like, this is it. Like you're going to, everything's bad. Everything's going to continue to be bad. And thankfully I said, you can miss me with that. <laughs> you can miss me with that. That's not happening to Emily. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was able to just have this like knowing that it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to come true. Um, but you have a very similar, um, story, but yours is like on level 10 in that you were paralyzed. So please, um, tell us where you got your real life teaching on all of this. Okay, sure. First off, congratulations. Thanks. My, my deepest congratulations. Thank Kudos. You. 
Yes. I know what that takes. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Uh, let me let me start a little before and I'll get to it because I think some context is helpful. Okay. Um, just just because, uh, <clears throat> well, let's start as a kid. I won't, this won't be long. I'll try not to make it long. Okay. Oh no, take your time. As, as a little kid, I used to what is now called astral projection. <clears throat> I used to leave my body all the time. So really? I didn't know that. Totally normal for me. In fact, I grew up leaving my body. So I would sit down and relax as a kid. And all of a sudden my consciousness or sentience or soul, whatever word you want to use, would literally be outside of my body. And my awareness would be looking at my body, sitting in the chair or lying in bed. This was totally normal for me on a daily basis, multiple times a day. And it would happen automatically. I wasn't trying to do it. I certainly wasn't trained in it. I was a kid and it would just start to happen. So I, I knew from a very, very early age that I was spirit, for lack of a better word, and not this human suit, not this human character. So I knew that right away. Um, what progressed right away is just my ability to what we call astral projection. So at first I thought I could only, I have to stay in my parents' house when, when I would leave my body, right? It's like, well, I, I should probably stay here, right? So eventually I realized that's not, that's not necessary. So I would roam the neighborhood and then pretty quick, I could go to a top of a mountain just by thinking about going to the top of a mountain. My consciousness would be at the top of a mountain. So as a child, as a child, it got far more uh, interesting than that. So I, wow. I started to realize, you know, I wanted to go to different planets. I wanted to go. So just by thinking about it, intent, intention, right? So just by having the intent, remember when you're pure spirit, your pure energy, right? The, the oneness is now tangibly realized. All you have to do is think about it and it happens, right? When you're inside the body, it's it's not like that. Uh, things are so slow here and that it affords us the ability to see ourselves in the act of creation. So you get to learn about yourself as an immortal creator because you see yourself in the act of creation. In these higher states of consciousness, it's, it's immediate. So there's very specific lessons we can learn here because of the low frequency. So uh, I, I just literally started going to different realities uh, what I now understand is different frequencies and different dimensions. And I was doing this as a kid and I would literally interact with what we would call advanced beings, highly, highly evolved beings. And, uh, and this as a kid, believe it or not, as weird as this is, but this was totally normal for me. And one of the things I used to say to myself when I would do this, when I would travel, so to speak, I had a mantra, who knows where that came from. I had a mantra and I used to say to myself, I retain all information and knowledge contained within this realm. And I would say it over and over. Every time I went somewhere to a higher realm, a higher, I retain all information and knowledge contained within this realm. And so literally, Emily, every time, and I was doing this every day, every time I left, so to speak, when I would come back into my body, I was wiser If that, as a way to look at it, as a way to look at it. So I had that mantra. I was retaining everything, everything, everything. So this is... <laughs> how I grew up right now I had normal jobs and all all the sort of all the sort of things I was Did never your parents a, know yeah I told them uh I'm trying to think the age I was I was quite young but I remember the statement was I asked my mom I go what what planet and realm do you go to when you go to sleep <laughs> and she's she's like what I said no I mean like where do you go mom when you you know when you sleep you don't really sleep I mean you go somewhere and you interact right where do you go She's like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, and I'm like, what do you mean? What am I talking about? You don't do that? She's like, no, I don't do that. Nobody does that. What is going on with you? So that I'm was my- I'm so glad she didn't like take you to a psychiatrist and put you on psych meds. No, because it was, it was I think it was too authentic, if that I'm makes so sense. I'm so glad. I'm so yeah. glad. Because some people get scared when kids start talking like that. Yeah, no. I, and I think just even some of the things I would say even as a kid were just so unusual that- it's like, you know, RJ is a little different, which is fine. And, and, but I think it was obvious, right? So, uh, but I had a normal life, uh, even though I was always doing this. Um, certain abilities, we call these things clairsentience, claircognizant, clairvoyant, things like that. Uh, healing abilities and all these kind of things, um, which I was really able to, I think, to hone once my body got destroyed. But I grew, I grew up like this and had normal jobs. I didn't feel normal. I used to give past life readings for people. And then I just realized that 
it wasn't helping them because actually they were forming more identifications to these other lifetimes. So it, it wasn't, I wasn't liberating their consciousness, which was mm. the, I, which was the idea. So I just stopped doing it. Mm. Um, but if we want to fast forward, so to speak, uh, till I was about 40 <clears throat> and the last two quote unquote regular jobs I had, um, I guess we could say my true nature was coming through, uh, people that I worked with would literally, uh, call me a uh, sensei and master at work. Uh, and I certainly wasn't like, you know, teaching those things. I, I just think my nature and the, the things I would talk about, they would literally say, yes, master. Yes, sensei. Yes, master. And I remember this one CEO of a company, he's like, RJ, why is everyone calling you master? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I certainly never asked anybody to call me master, you know, RJ, Mr. Spina, buddy, I don't care. You know, he's like, you can't have people at work calling you master. I go, okay. I you know, sent out a company wide email, you know, Hey, please don't call me master. Just call me RJ, whatever, you know, and all the emails come back, hundreds of people, all the emails come back. You got it, RJ. Sure thing, Mr. Spina. And then the next day I'd see them. Yes, master. Yes, oh my gosh. So, so what I what I said was that I think my true um, nature was just bleeding through, even though I was at a regular job. And then uh, at forty at forty five, uh, I became deathly sick. Uh, as you know, I was permanently air quotes permanently paralyzed from the chest down. Uh, I was told I'd only live another forty eight hours. I had severe severe sepsis. Uh, I had, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes, Hashimoto's autoimmune disease, thyroiditis, pancreatitis. Uh, and I suffered from something called uh, autonomic dysreflexia, which paraplegics and quadriplegics who have an injury above T6 and the infection had gotten above T7, T8 for me. I, paraplegics and quadriplegics die of complications from autonomic dysreflexia. You can have a stroke, an aneurysm, go into a coma. So autonomic dysreflexia, you're, it completely runs havoc with your autonomic system. So in other words, your breathing, your pulse, your heart rate, and your body temperature just go, there, there's no control over it. My pulse would drop. Uh, I, I would just stop breathing, completely stop breathing. So it really became, Emily, it really became like an ancient yogic practice for me to regain bodily control over these deeper, deeper functions. And so all this was going on while I was in the hospital rehab while well, I was told I'd only live another 48 hours. So I had emergency life saving surgery. They did something called the laminectomy, which is where they scrape the infection off your, off your spine. And I was that already lovely. Yeah. I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> I was already paralyzed and people can see this on the, on the homepage of my website. There's a video. You can see the MRI on my spine. You can see the surgeon's notes. And then when I woke up from emergency life saving surgery, the best way I can describe it is that I had I had truly awakened into into authentic cosmic consciousness, and I literally started explaining to the uh, the ICU nurse that <clears throat> oh I'm going to put myself back together, and, uh, and I started explaining higher consciousness, enlightened metaphysics about self healing, and I explained it in great detail, and I even said in a hundred days I'm going to walk unassisted, absolutely no problem. I know exactly what to do, and I remember the look on her face. She's like, "How do you know this?" And I, I said to her, I just remember, I literally remember. So, and that is, it's like a muscle memory. It's like it all, it just all just came back to me. So um, that, that was almost seven years ago now. And I did just as I said, and this is documented on the hundredth day. I saw the videos of you yeah. walking. So, and you can see the videos of me just starting to move my foot, moving my leg and all this kind of stuff. Um, I, I honestly and authentically understand how self-healing and self-realization actually works. It's metaphysics. It's a, it's a repeatable process that anybody can do because metaphysics are just a deeper set of what is. And so when you access this deeper set of what is, what, you, what you're able to do with yourself is more profound because you're working more and more with the source point of what you really are. So since, since, um, since regaining function of my body and putting it back together, all I've done really is... Um, work with people all over the world, helping them with their healing or just self-realization, people that are not sick, that want to expand their consciousness and actually experience what, what enlightenment actually is. So this is what I've done. Uh, I've written a book, Supercharged Self-Healing. This, uh, 
the turning point for me, I had many different awakenings as a little kid. Uh, there were certain things that happened. I'm not going to be specific about them. There were certain things that happened across the, during my, during this incarnation that made me realize and wake up to, to what I really am. Uh, but I gave myself that great test of, of permanent paralysis and uh, really a destroyed body. Um, <clears throat> and I, I, knew I, I knew I would be able to put myself back together. It was important to me that I prove to myself yet again, that I can put myself back together and then to be able to offer these teachings to humanity. It's not a theory. This isn't a uh, spiritual woo woo or a uh, medical fiction. This is metaphysics. This is real magic. This is how you do it. And there are literally thousands of people. You can see testimonials, thousands of people that I've taught these understandings to that were incredibly sick and no amount of, uh, acupuncture, Western medicine, tinctures, herbs, you know, they couldn't get better. But when they started working with their sentience and their energy directly from a higher state of consciousness, they literally were able to overcome whatever it is their problem is. And so this is what brings me great joy. Uh, it's my love to be able to do this. And, um, and, and frankly, it's my responsibility to teach these things. And so this is, this is what I do. Uh, I'll never stop, not just in this incarnation, but other incarnations. So I'll never stop doing it. And uh, it's a true honor. And um, I'm just very, very grateful to still be here as RJ, whoever RJ is, to be here as RJ, uh, to be able to help people overcome what it is that they've gotten stuck by. Yes. And what I love about my story and your story, because um, uh, another part of my story was uh, I had debilitating mental illness um, and I was just incapacitated. Um, and I'm a therapist. I have my master's in clinical counseling and I had to quit working for six months. And, um, when you go into that dark, dark, deep pit, you know, you're like, this is the worst thing that ever happened to me. And now on the other side of it, I'm like, that is the best thing that ever happened to me that had to happen. And so I love us telling our stories so that when people get, you know, these horrible diagnoses, we can go, Hey, th that's the way that's yeah. the way I'm cheering you on. Like, let's watch this unfold. Cause it's going to be epic. That only a truly evolved and advanced soul would see things from that perspective, Emily. And that's exactly what you are. Thank you. And so we, we give ourselves, the more evolved the soul, the bigger the obstacle, because the only way the soul or the consciousness or the sentience evolves is through, through having challenges that we see ourselves in the act of overcoming them. And so you gave yourself a great challenge and you, you've mastered it. And this, this, is what we're, this is what we're all here to do. No one gives themselves a challenge too big. They wouldn't have given, itself, given themselves that challenge. So when we work with ourselves properly, we, we also start to see, just like you said, we see these moments where we could label these things as traumatic or we're never going to recover. I saw it as liberation. I saw the, the literal destruction of my body as total liberation. Mm. I had no identification with my body whatsoever. I was inside of it, couldn't feel it, and it didn't work. Now that normally only happens when you're disincarnate or when you're quote unquote dead. I had the good fortune of experiencing that while still inside my body. So I understand what authentic liberation and self-realization actually is while still being here. It's a gift. It's a, just like you said, it's an absolute gift. I would not trade nope. the absolute, and you know what I'm talking about, agony, agony. And I'm not even, I, I, I could go on and on. I'm not going to, I go on and on about the agony involved in paralysis and putting your body back together and being that sick. That's not the point. The, the point is, is that it's a gift. I use it as liberation. And anyone who is sick or hurting or troubled, understand that this is, this is your transformation point. Yes. This isn't the end point. This is your transformation point. What this really means is the person that you were before no longer serves your highest good. Mm. It has to be shed. And that's why you now have this challenge because that old character that you were before doesn't serve you anymore. So you need to let go of that and awaken into something grander, something more holistic, something, something even more beautiful. 
So it's a transformation point. It is the, it, the phoenix rising. That's what this is. And if we can see every challenge in that way, we'll start to tackle these things with, with gusto, with passion, with a determination that will make sure that we end up on the other side of it every single time. Absolutely. And that's, that's why I'll never shut up because I just want to give people hope that it's possible. That's all, that's all I needed. Um, Michaela Peterson, do you know who Michaela Peterson is? Mm -hmm. Um, she was my, uh, my, she was what brought me that hope. And I was just like, if she can resolve autoimmune disease and mental illness by changing her food, and stopping to eat sugar and processed food. I can do that. And, and so, and I didn't have an idea of like a result. I lost 120 pounds and I wasn't even trying to lose weight. I was just trying to resolve my mental illness and to be able to walk again. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And it, it literally didn't matter to me how it happened. I was just like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's mm -hmm. going to happen. And it, it it's crazy how it has snowballed because, um, I, I was able to walk, um, and have no symptoms of MS by May. I started this in February of 2019. So by May of 2019, all the MS was resolved by April of 2019, all the bipolar disorder was resolved. And then I was off the psych meds by September of 2019, lost 120 pounds by December of 2019. So bam, 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 like it was fast the way it happened, but I am not the same person that I was two years ago. I'm not the same person I was a year ago. I'm not the same person I was last week. Like it's crazy. I feel like I'm drinking out of the fire hose, <laughs> but I'm still thirsty. <laughs> like, it's so fun. <laughs> so I just want to encourage other people that even your worst moment, not only can that resolve, but it can get even better. At a hundred percent. You're a hero. You're an absolute hero. And that, that, that's exactly right. And let, let's, let's make sure that we all understand that healing is not linear. Okay. That's just how the mind, the finite rational thinking mind, not the higher mind, how the finite rational thinking mind experiences and transcribes the greater reality. It's a reduction. Healing is quantum, for lack of a better word. There were days where I showed no indication that I would be able to move my leg or move it. And the next day I was doing it as if I never lost that function. Wow. And, and I, the, the, the physical therapist who been doing this their whole life, they're like, Archie, what are you doing? <laughs> What is going on? And I would say the same thing, magic, magic. <laughs> so healing is not linear and healing is not always a process. I'm going to throw a, a whole new perspective on this. Okay. okay? And just go, go with me for a second. I'm ready. Okay. okay. So everyone is, hopefully everyone is familiar with the placebo effect, yes. right? Okay. So, you know, someone's sick and the doctor gives them three pills and say, okay, listen, Emily, these pills are so strong. Okay. You only need three. Okay. And after you take the first one, you're probably going to feel hundred percent already, but the two are just to make sure, but they're super strong one at a time. And you only need three. You're going to be totally fine. Okay. They're sugar pills, right? They're sugar pills. Okay. It is scientifically proven that we heal ourselves. The placebo effect is the proof. It is the proof that we heal ourselves. Now, where I would part part of where I want to put a new light on that, it is not through belief, it's through a knowing. Mm. Knowing is not believing. We use beliefs when we don't know. Okay. Mm. From, from a higher consciousness perspective, belief has nothing to do with healing. That's an unawakened mind perspective. So healing actually occurs with a knowingness, just like you said, I knew I was going to exactly. But when I told the ICU nurse, no, I know how to do this. And I, uh, uh, you know, blab, babble on and on about higher conscious metaphysics. No, I know. I don't believe I'm going to get, I, I know it. It's not a belief. Okay. So healing does not happen through belief. That is not accurate. Not from my perspective. It happens from an inner knowingness, which is a very specific vibration and frequency. Okay. Mm. That's actually where healing comes from. Now let's take it a step further. Okay. 
since it's scientifically proven that we heal ourselves, and we do, many of us are just looking for permission to heal. Let me give an example. There are some people, and I've worked with tons of them. There are some people that, let, let's say they have cancer. I'm just using, you know, it could be anything. So they have cancer, right? In fact, there's a gentleman who I'm going to be talking to shortly, right? Okay. So, and I remember him saying to me, RJ, I really feel that I can overcome this. I know it's stage four, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. If I eat the right foods, if it's green, I juice, organic, non-GMO, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And everything he was saying was on the money. He goes, I know if I do this, 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 I'm going to beat this thing, right? And I said, yeah, exactly. I go, that's your permission slip that you're giving yourself. You are now allowing yourself to heal if you do that. So the, the juicing, the organic, the non-GMO is your permission slip to heal yourself. Now, someone else may say, RJ, I know if I develop a very deep meditative practice and I start doing yoga and I raise my frequency and my consciousness, I'm going to be able to overcome my heart disease and my paralysis. I know it. That is that person's permission slip that they're going to give themselves through meditation and yoga and, you know, except whatever it is. They could have told me if, you know, if, if I start juggling, if I start juggling every day, right? I know that through this juggling, I'm going to develop hand-eye coordination. That's going to not, right? I'm just making that up. I'm, what I'm saying is, is that, Emily, this is really important. We give ourselves permission to heal. Some people choose food. Some people choose meditation. Some people choose Chinese herbs. Some people choose Western medicine. Some people choose, you know, going to India and sitting with the master, right? Okay. Listen to what I'm saying. We give ourselves permission to heal. And that's when it happens. Wow. The physical interface is irrelevant. I promise you, the physical interface is irrelevant. A tincture, a sugar pill, a green juice, I, I don't care what it is. We do it. We do it. We have convinced ourselves it's the green drink, it's the tincture, it's the Chinese herb, it, it's the chemotherapy, it's the, 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 the it's working with RJ, right? No, it's a permission. I'm a permission slip, right? Okay. When we start to understand that we heal ourselves, everyone who's listening, give yourself permission to heal. Give yourself permission to heal. And I got news for you. Your doctor might not give it to you or your acupuncturist or your wife or your husband or your chiropractor, blah, blah, whoever. Give yourself permission to heal. We are this powerful. This is how real metaphysics and magic actually works. It's got nothing to do with that other stuff. We think it does, and that's what makes it real. You do it. You do it. That's where the placebo effect is proof. Here's a pill. It's so strong, you're going, to be, you're going to be fine. It's a sugar pill. How did the healing take place? You did it. This is the same for everybody. This is also part of the paradigm shift of the book, is to understand how real enlightened metaphysics actually work. This is how powerful we are. So everyone give yourself permission to heal and do it. And if you need a book and steps, then get my book. If you, if you need to listen to Emily talk about how she, then listen to Emily and have Emily tell you how she did it. Or if you need to watch this video or that video, that, I don't care, stand on your head. Whatever it is that gives you permission to heal, do it. But realize you're doing it. You're that powerful and no one can take that away from you. Nobody. And when you're truly ready to heal, and I mean it, when you are ready to let go of whatever you're holding on to, you will let go and you will arrive at the other side. Man. Carnivore was mm. my placebo effect. Yeah. yeah. You, Eating you, meat and fat was my placebo effect and it was my permission slip yeah. to heal. You got it. That's how it works. So you, yeah. So you, for that, someone else, it's the green drink. Someone yeah. else, it, someone else, it's the Chinese herbs. Yeah. Look at, look at all these people, by the way, like yourself, like me, look at all these people that have authentically healed themselves of real serious, you know, issues, right? I'm not talking about a cold, right? Yeah. People that were people that the doctors are like, Hey, sorry, 
Nothing I can do. Okay. Look at their story. How come none of them did the exact same thing? None of them did the exact same thing. Well then, well, then what does that mean? It means just what I said. We're this powerful. When we're ready and we give ourselves permission to heal, it'll be the carnivore diet. It'll be the juice. It'll be the tincture. It'll be RJ's book. It'll be this. It'll be that. What difference does it make when it you're doesn't. ready? It doesn't. This is how powerful we are. When we, when we work properly, metaphysics and magic is, is the answer to all of it. It's not, it's not the rational thinking, figuring out, let me just analyze, let me just, we don't need any of that. Set your intention, let go of limitations, give yourself permission. That's all that's needed. That's all that's needed. We're this powerful. We're just, we're just starting to remember Mm. how this how this really works and like i said the placebo effect is proof it's yeah. scientific proof we heal ourselves so everybody pick something if you need a permission slip pick something chinese herbs rj's book emily's story carnivore diet this diet whatever do it do it and don't look back mm. do what you tangibly know to be true and expect mm. no results yeah, that, that, yeah, that's, that's one where people are like, what does that mean, RJ? So, okay. So when I say tangibly no to be true, okay. That Cause does like, not... I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, oh, I think that cinnamon toast crunch is going to heal me. So I'm going to go eat 10 bowls of cinnamon toast crunch every day. Right, right. Okay. So the, the key word there is tangible. Okay. Now, most of us, what we um, accept as truth is, is just mental meanderings right? We call this facts or we call, okay. No, that's just mental machinations. That's not truth. That's mental. That's agreed upon mental machinations. There's, there's no power in that. There's no truth in that either. Okay. So when I say tangible truth, that means, you know, in your heart, what is true for you. Most of us know, it's just a ridiculous example. I feel good about myself if I'm crossing the street and let's just say, I see someone struggling to walk, I've been there. I see someone struggling to walk and maybe I put my arm out and say, hey, just latch on, latch on, I got you, right? I know being that way, compassionate and present, I know that to be tangibly true and works for me. That works for me. Now, I also know that if I see someone struggling across the street, I don't put my foot out to trip them, okay? I don't do that, right? Because for me, I, you know, it's a joke, but you know what I mean? I wouldn't feel good about myself. It doesn't work for me. I tangibly know that doesn't work for me. I tangibly know the other, the other side of that coin does. Okay. So that's what I mean when I say tangibly know to be true in your heart, not what you've memorized in your head. I got news for everybody. Everything that you accept as fact, as truth is going to be blown out of the water. All of it. Everything that you're hanging your hat on right now as scientific truth or this wrong. Everything that we thought of before was true has been blown out of the water. Remember when earth was the center of the universe and not the sun? Remember that? People were put to death for that. Okay. And that, oh, that's scientific, scientifically proven. No, it isn't. Okay. So everything we're hanging our hat on right now, don't bother with it. We have to start tapping into magic and metaphysics and that's where we get it. So tangibly know to be true is what you know in your heart. Mm. Do that. Because really what we are, by the way, just, to, to, just so that is encapsulated, our sentience, our consciousness is not in our head. Our sentience sits between our heart and our spine when we're incarnate. And that's why every single person, when they indicate themselves, they point to the center of their chest and go, me. No one ever goes me and points to their head because there ain't nothing up here, right? What you are sits right here. And then we always go me and point right here. So do what you, you, the real you, the true self, do what you tangibly know to be true. And by expecting no results, that keeps you in the present moment, that keeps you in the flow state, that keeps you in the act of creation, as opposed to pulling off the side of the road and looking to see if you're any closer to the store. Right. So do what you tangibly know to be true and expect no results. Stay present, stay in the flow state. This is the highest quality of life to be able to live that way. And it's also 
the most successful life to be able to be true to yourself and stay that way all the time. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because like other, other carnivore coaches were like, why is your thing called inner clarity system? You know, why wouldn't you call it like carnivore clarity? And I'm just like, Mm. because it's not about carnivore. Like I, I, every, at the beginning of every, um, it's an eight week system that people work with me. And at the beginning, I have this one-on-one with them and I tell them, what is your body telling you to eat? What, what I, I teach them to listen to themselves, not listen to me, not listen to Dr. So-and-so or this YouTuber or this influencer. What is your knowing know that you're supposed to eat? And then I hold them accountable to that. I cheer them on for eight weeks. And so they're the ones that write the system. And I'm so grateful that I had no idea what I was doing and I did it right. (laughs) You, you, yeah, you were listening to yourself as well. That's your own higher mind guiding you through intuition. Wisdom flows on the river of intuition. Mm. That's how we get it, right? That has nothing to do with thinking. There's nothing to do with thinking. And just to talk about diet for a second, in the book, I talk, you know, I talk about this. I didn't eat for three weeks. Nothing, absolutely nothing, 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 nothing. I, I mean, I drank water, but nothing for three weeks, right? Now, at the end of the three weeks, I had literally completely changed everything about my physical body through that diet. I was already doing that through the healing technique and putting my spine back together, healing my thyroid and all this kind of stuff through, through magic, real magic. But the, what I did through the fasting was that I completely reset, broke any attachments or egoic identifications with certain kind of foods. They were gone because I never gave in. I never ate. I broke every craving. I broke every habit. I broke all of it. It was, I was completely pristine. I had been cleansed mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually of everything. Now what's interesting, that's not the interesting part. What's interesting, Emily, after that, I can remember it was the 21st day, right? And I was like, oh, I think I need to eat today. <laughs> I, I think I, I need to eat. Like, I, I think I kind of got to where this line is where now I will start to suffer uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. If I continue before it was, it was a real purification on the, on the deepest levels. Okay. But so I said, you know what? I need to eat today. And I, it's just what you were describing for your clients. I literally said to myself, okay, what do you want? Talking to my body, what do you want? I had broken any attachments. So I, so my mind, my ego mind was not going to make this decision. So I asked my body, what do you want? You tell me, what do you want? Fish, vegetables, and nuts. That's what it wanted. So that's, so, and here's the other funny part about it. I had the same meal. I'm not kidding. I had the same meal every day for a year and a half. I've had that for four years. There you go. (laughs) Go Okay. You get it. Okay. So I had fish, I had vegetables and I had nuts. My girlfriend's like, what do you want for, what do you want for dinner? Joking. I know what you want for dinner. So once we, so in other words, the ego mind, right. Or ego mind identity, EMI is what I call it in the book doesn't get in the way. The ego mind identity is like electromagnetic interference. So if when you have your, your uh, radio, right? Okay. And you're changing the dial and it's not a station that's really coming in clear. Okay. That's what your ego mind identity is. It's electromagnetic interference that blocks the true signal of yourself. Through meditation, you get rid of that electromagnetic interference or what we call nonstop thinking. And your true signal comes forward and we get to know that through intuition. It actually speaks to us endlessly. The self, what we really are is timeless and immortal. It already knows everything. The ego mind doesn't know anything, which is why it memorizes everything. It doesn't know anything. So you have to turn that dial so you can receive your own inner signal. And that intuition is your wisdom. It's impossible to make a wrong decision when you're operating that way. And that's what I used for my body for my body to tell me what it is that it wanted to eat. Cause I had no desire for anything. I just knew my body needed some food. I didn't have a desire for anything, nothing. It wasn't like, Oh, I want steak or, Oh, I want, you know, Twinkies or whatever. I had no desire for anything. It's yeah. like, what, what do you want? That's best for you. Fish, vegetables, nuts. You got it. 
I love it. I love it. Well, um, let's show everybody real quick um, your book. Um, well, oh, well, this is your what your uh, your YouTube channel. Ascend the frequencies. Man, you are a metaphysical teacher, <laughs> <laughs> or I would say master, a <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, metaphysical master. Um, so uh, this is uh, your. Uh, your YouTube channel, um, so many good videos on there. Um, I really like the, um, some of the healing sounds, the high mm. frequency tones. Um, those I've used those for meditation a lot. Uh, ever since I discovered this, I just discovered you, I think like two weeks ago. Um, and then this is your website. Um, so we're going to put the link, uh, in the show notes to both of these, um, and the courses, um, that you do uh, on a pretty regular basis, um, the supercharged self-healing, um, and then you have the online course and the mobile app. So, um, amazing resources. And then the book, <laughs> um, yeah. so supercharged self-healing. Yeah. The, that, that right there, by the way, on the left, uh, it says I first started, uh, I first treated RJ perhaps as lowest point. So the the forward for the book, if you scroll up just a little bit to the top of that, forward, yeah, right there by Adrian Bean. So when I was in the hospital for a couple of months, the only guest that I had was a, a Chinese medicine expert. And so he was coming to see me and he wasn't doing acupuncture or giving me tinctures or herbs. He was doing something called cranial sacral therapy, which is where he puts his hand li literally on your head. And because he's so well-trained for this and he's been doing it for I think he's, I think he says he's treated over a hundred thousand people. Wow. So, oh yeah, and he's funny. He's sought after. He's phenomenal. What he does. He really is phenomenal. What he does. So I remember he would, he came to see me. It was like on the third day or the fourth, the fourth day, something like that. My body was a wreck. And uh, so he put his hands, he would put his hands on, on my head. And because he's so fine tuned, he could tell the different, the various qualities of the organs because everything gets related and transcribed by the brain. So by touching the brain, he could actually feel what goes on with your spleen or your kidneys or this or that. Um, so two things about this is interesting. He put his, the first time he put his hands on my head, he said, I'm going to do cranial psychotherapy and started explaining what I was just explaining. And he, he put his hands on my head. He's behind me. I'm in the hospital bed. And he puts his hands on my head and then he pulls his hands away. Now I kind of knew what happened, but I'll pulls his hands. So I, I go, Adrian, you're all right. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not very convincing. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. And he, he puts his hands on my head again, it takes them away again and then goes right back. Right. And then, and now, now he's, now he settles in. Right. Okay. So, so I said, when he was done, uh, Adrian, what, what happened? He said, well, I got a feeling, you know, what happened? I said, yeah, but what, what was, what was your experience when you did that? He said, RJ, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. I've literally treated over a hundred thousand people. Now, when I put my hands on their head, I can feel the various qualities of brain tissue and based upon the qualities and the tension within the brain tissue, I know the level of healing that needs to take place with the organs and this and that. He said, when I put my hands on your head, he said, I connected with a vastness. It was like the entire universe when I touched your head. He said, it almost knocked me off my feet. Oh, my gosh. He goes, is that what enlightenment is? Oh. I said, yes, yeah, something like that. So he wrote about it's in that forward on that. He literally writes about that exact experience. Now, because he was seeing me twice a week, like I said, he's fantastic. Um, he, he was witnessing and participating. He was witnessing in this healing that's impossible, like literally putting my, and I would explain to him what I'm doing. And as he was working on me, I could tell him what he was doing because I could actually see it not with these eyes, but I could actually see it. And I would add to his intention. So based upon what he was doing, I would tack onto it. Wow. Literally, like you were, right? you were, you guys were like co-creating. Correct. Literally. 
right? So he started seeing what was happening. Like the, the healing was, he says in the forward that if he didn't witness it firsthand, he would have said it was impossible. This kind of healing cannot take place, let alone that rapid. It's just impossible. And yet he did it and he did it just as he said he would in a hundred days. He told me in a hundred days he'd walk and I did. So he's like, I want to write the forward for your book Aww. because I have to, people need to know this. I mean, you did this, you predicted the whole thing. You explained the whole thing. You teach the whole thing. So he, so he wrote the forward for the, for the book. And he was, he was literally the only guest that I had for the, the two and a half months that I was there. And it was really Adrian. When I first got discharged from the, from the hospital rehab, I remember he, he said, he said, I really want you to teach meditation and metaphysics to all my patients and, and clients. He's a huge practice in San Diego. And I said, uh, I said, yeah, sh- yeah, sure. I'll do that. He goes, no, no, RJ, you need to. <laughs> right. I was like, okay. Okay. I kn- Emily, I knew in that moment that my life was going to totally change. I, I knew it. And so the, the next weekend I would go there every weekend. And the first time there was like 10 or 15 people there. And I, I teach them, you know, some of the crazy metaphysics I talk about. I teach them that. And then before you knew it, like you couldn't fit anyone in the practice. There was a waiting list. This went on. Wow. And then, and then it just became RJ. Is there any way I can work with you? Wow. You know, w- one-on-one. So, cause I'm, you know, I'm really sick and I, you know, or I want to reach in line. So before I realized that I was crazy busy with all these people, I had no intention of doing any of this. Absolutely. I mean, it. absolutely none. I wasn't going to do any of this stuff. I was just going to kind of write a book and just, you know, live in the middle of nowhere kind of thing. And, uh, but this was always meant to be. And it's just kind of funny. It was through Adrian that all this, all this started to happen. And but before I realized that, I was seeing tons of people every day. Then it became teaching courses, teaching classes, uh, making online courses, a mobile app, and so on and so forth. But it, it real all it all started from that, and it all started from that experience of him putting his his hands on my that's head. So funny! And, and he almost completely completely freaked out. But yeah, that's so. The forward for the book is is written by Adrian, and I know every author talks about their book, but. I mean it when I say the book is completely and utterly revolutionary. There's no book like this in terms of self-healing and self-realization. It literally lays out exactly how it works from an authentically enlightened perspective. And if you if you have any kind of challenge, mental, emotional, physical, or all the above, get the book and dedicate yourself to the teachings. It will radically transform whatever you have going on because it will give you true tangible access to your own essence and higher mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, anybody who's listening to this, um, I, I, uh, encourage you to go to the show notes right now. Um, go look up his website, look up his YouTube channel and buy his book. Um, and, uh, thank you so much RJ for spending all this time with me. Um, it, I have literally lost time. Like this has been so incredible talking to you. Um, and I have a feeling this won't be the last time. Uh, it, it's been my pleasure. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, please keep doing what you're doing. This planet needs more souls like yourself doing exactly what it is. You don't need my encouragement. Just keep going you're an absolute hero and anyone who gets the opportunity to work with you should consider themselves blessed. And I, and I mean that. And I also mean it when I say, yeah, let's, let's do this again. Let me know. And we'll, we'll have another conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds good. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye, sweetheart. Bye.